Right now it's seven home for the holiday, but it's getting wet outside. Chief meteorologist Jeff Ranieri has our updated forecast. Also, police asked for your help finding the woman in this surveillance video, what she was accused of doing in a Bay Area neighborhood. And new lows for HP stock as the company deals with its latest bad financial decision. NBC Bay Area News starts now. And good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brent Cannon. Not the best timing. Rain returning to the Bay Area just in time for the holiday travel. The rush is actually getting underway. Garvin Thomas shot this video for us in San Leandro. As you see, their roads getting pretty wet. And lots of folks either commuting uh, for work or getting ready to head out of town. We begin with Chief Meteorologist Jeff Ranieri. He is in our weather center with the latest look, Jeff. Yeah, that's right, uh, Brenton. This storm is very slow moving. It's been over the North Bay for the entire morning and also for the afternoon. We've produced about a quarter to a half inch of rainfall for a lot of you from Santa Rosa all the way down to Novato and also San Rafael and finally starting to push at least more consistent rainfall across portions of the peninsula. You can see as we zoom in, still some heavy pockets here on 101. If you're headed that way, do be prepared for some drastically different different conditions than what you've experienced today in the East Bay. Those roadways are very slick. A lot of the commuters uh, definitely putting those brakes on and traffic slowing down quite a bit. And you can see here a few batches of showers expected to continue over San Francisco over the next 20 to 30 minutes. Developing showers continue across the Bay as we head throughout tonight. SFO airport delays right now over two hours and we anticipate those delays to continue to stack up in the next 24 hours. We could see one to two hours there at SFO in Oakland about 50 minutes here as we head throughout our Wednesday forecast. We're going to detail when all this rain pushes out coming up in that full forecast, Brent. All right, thanks, Jeff. Put on your clothes. There's going to be no private parts in public places in San Francisco anymore. The new ruling coming from the Board of Supervisors, which has passed a controversial ban on nudity. The vote was six to five, and it does not outlaw nudity all the time. Being in the buff will still be allowed during certain permit events, which would include the Gay Pride, Beta Breakers Race, and the Folsom Street Fair. A nudist group has already filed a federal lawsuit opposing that ban, arguing it infringes on freedom of expression. There's a $100 fine if your bottom is seen in public. A lot of packages will be delivered throughout the holiday season, but once they get delivered to your house, will they stay there until you get home? A woman was caught on surveillance video stealing from a home in the Glenmore area of Fremont. Police releasing the, the surveillance tape of that showing a woman taking a package and also a bag of canned food that was meant to be donations for charity. Police say that she arrived shortly right after the UPS made a delivery. A warning about housekeepers. You let them inside of your home. Sometimes you give them a key and many times they feel like members of your family, but occasionally it turned out to be criminals taking advantage of your trust. NBC Bay Area's Chris Sanchez has the story of one housekeeper who police say victimized three families and perhaps more. 36-year-old Martha Quintero Ramirez was a trusted housekeeper. Now the Redwood City woman is behind bars in Palo Alto on felony burglary charges, accused of stealing from people who trusted her in their homes. Two people on Bryant Street in Palo Alto had used the same housekeeper for years with no problem until that housekeeper took on a new helper, Martha Quintero Ramirez. The two of them get together, realize that, wait a second, we're missing some of our jewelry. Where is it? They in turn contacted a third person who also discovered that there are missing items. Police ruled out the main housekeeper, but found pearl earrings, gold bracelets, gold pendants, and even some costume jewelry in Quintero Ramirez's purse and under a mattress in her home. They also found a pawn receipt, which may explain why one item reported stolen still hasn't been found. Yeah, one of our victims had a uh, antique Rolex taken. It was a World War II relic that was handed down from, uh, I believe it was a grandparent. And uh, that item has not been recovered. It's a, a rose-colored Rolex watch, World War II generation. Care.com is a site dedicated to helping people find domestic employees. They say when hiring a housekeeper, verify work experience and references. Ask the housekeeper how they protect the key to your home or consider a keypad with a code that you can change. Ask a friend or neighbor to drop by unannounced to check on the housekeeper. And if you are particularly concerned, you can request background and credit checks, driving records, even a drug test. Housekeepers often work in more than one area, and that is why Palo Alto police are working with area agencies to figure out whether there could be other victims in other cities. In Palo Alto, Chris Sanchez, NBC Bay Area News. 
New details about a double murder case at the Richmond Toll Plaza. The convicted killer receiving the death penalty, but he laughed as that sentence was read. 49-year-old Nathan Burris acted as his own attorney during the often bizarre trial. He mocked victims' families throughout the trial and repeatedly told the jury that he was happy to go to death row. One female juror said that the panel was frustrated by the long delays and they thought that the death penalty was actually too good for Burris. They even feared that Burris would kill other inmates, something that he promised that he would do on the witness stand if he did get life in prison. And now to the latest on the Middle East. After seven days of fighting, a possible truce shattered by more violence. Earlier reports that a truce had been struck between Israel and Hamas turns out to be false. The militant organization that rules the Gaza Strip so far not agreeing, but that truce is still being negotiated. Egypt is serving as a mediator trying to broker that peace deal. And Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is trying to help. She arrived in Jerusalem about six hours ago and met immediately with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. She came straight from Cambodia, where she had been traveling with President Obama on a diplomatic trip. She will also meet with President, uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and then fly to Egypt to meet with Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi. The goal must be a durable outcome that promotes regional stability and advances the security and legitimate aspirations of Israelis and Palestinians alike. Right now, no sign that a ceasefire is even close, though. In the last few hours, Israel launched an aggressive missile assault on Gaza City. They say it's in response to more than 150 new rockets fired by Hamas. It's been one of the most violent nights so far. Israel says that if a diplomatic solution is not reached, then a ground war is still possible. Now, a prayer vigil for peace is about to begin at Temple Isaiah in Lafayette. Consul General of Israel to the Pacific Northwest, Dr. Andy David, will attend that event in a few minutes, but right now he's taken some time to join us. Thank you for speaking with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, there have been a, a steady stream of missiles fired from both sides again today, as we mentioned. Many international leaders are now involved trying to broker some kind of a ceasefire. Have you heard anything new? Are we any closer to some sort of a resolution? Have you gotten an update? Yes, I did. Uh, I got an update from Israel. Um, it seemed that we were close to reaching some kind of a ceasefire agreement, but uh, at the last moment Hamas uh, posed some uh, very ridiculous conditions. Uh, therefore, uh, we are not at that place yet. So what does that mean? We mentioned the possible ground in in incursion. Um, how long does Israel hold out before they move forward with that? Well, the purpose of this operation is to bring security and safety to the people of Israel. Uh, and if that would not be achieved through diplomatic means, of course, uh, a ground operation is uh, a possibility. You know, the uh, civilian toll continues to rise on both sides. We're seeing some just horrific and tragic video of children injured and dead. Hamas blaming Israel for killing civilians and children. How would you respond to those claims? Well, there's a, a very simple solution to that. If they stop the rockets, it all ends. That's it. They need to stop the rockets. We cannot live like that, and that's the solution. It's very simple. And I know, that, to be fair, that Hamas has fired a lot of rockets into uh, civilian areas of Israel. But the question then is, did Hamas draw Israel into a fight like this in order to engage in a, an aggressive PR smear campaign? Well, uh, if it's a PR campaign, it's a very cynical one because uh, they kill children on our side, they, the children on their side are being killed. Uh, it's unacceptable. And there may be some other forces uh, behind Hamas, like Iran, who is very happy at this moment to see that Hamas is fighting Israel. The they divert attention uh, to that region. Uh, I'm sure that in Syria, people are, the government of Syria is not uh, uh, very sad about what's happening now in Gaza because, again, it diverts attention from them. So there are forces behind Hamas, but at the end of the day, Hamas is responsible. They are the sovereign in Gaza. They should take care of their business uh, the right way. You, you kind of touched on a, another thing, and that's kind of the, the role that the region plays. There's new leadership in Egypt. New President Mohamed Morsi is more supportive of Hamas than any previous leadership in Egypt. So talk a little bit about his role and if he's going to be effective in hoping uh, to broker some kind of a deal. Well, so far the Egyptians have, have played an important role. We judge the Egyptians by their actions, 
not by uh, their words. And so far, the actions were very constructive. I know that they're working hard together with the United States and other countries to try and, and broker a uh, ceasefire. And I hope, I hope that they will be successful together with us to reach some uh, solution to that. You know, we're seeing more and more protesters from, from internationally heading to the area, more fighters sympathetic to the Palestinians in Gaza, trying to pour in through Egypt. Have the dynamics of the region changed since the Arab Spring? Well, I think there is more sensitivity. I think there is uh, more thought, uh, especially with us in Israel, that uh, um, the region has changed and there are new forces. The question is, what are those forces? Are those forces of democracy or forces of extremism? Uh, from what we see now with this struggle with Hamas, uh, I think it's the latter. And it's very unfortunate, but uh, uh, again, I, we, we have to judge Egypt and other countries by their actions. And I have to say that so far they've been doing everything they can to uh, prevent more bloodshed. I also have to say that uh, before the, this uh, last operation, uh, when Hamas was shooting rockets towards Israel, we tried to work with the Egyptians to reach some agreement, and we reached a few agreements, but again and again, Hamas have broken those agreements, have breached those agreements, and this is why we, uh, we are at this point today, where we are fighting Hamas, and we are trying to protect our own people. All right, we hope that some way a resolution can be reached. Uh, Dr. Andy David, Israel's Consul General to our region, we want to thank you so much for taking time to join us this evening before thank you, your Brent. event. Thank you, Brent. All right. Now, earlier today, we did speak with a Palestinian refugee, Zaid Abbas. He's the associate director of the Middle East Children's Alliance, and here's what he had to say about the crisis in Gaza. According to the Israeli army, two days ago, they had uh, uh, 1,350 targets in Gaza Strip. This is two days ago. 1,350 targets in Gaza Strip. And if you divide... 1,350 targets on 39 square miles, it will be around 35. They bombed 35 times in, on each square mile. And if you divide the number of the people on each square mile in Gaza Strip, you will find 38,000 people living in each square mile. So when they were bombed, they will approach civilians and people under siege since 2006 the blockade people they are missing the basic needs they don't have clean water they don't have uh, food they don't have medicine and they are facing different kind of collective punishment coming from the israeli side so it's absolutely we the palestinian people we are the civilian paying the price for all this kind of attacks all right again the con uh, the violence continues in gaza but diplomatic efforts are underway and we hope that something can be worked out soon still to come tonight at seven how often do medical emergencies happen 30,000 feet in the air the investigative unit looks at what airlines should be doing and why they're not reporting data about those kinds of incidences plus were investors duped a silicon valley tech giant comes clean about a multi-billion dollar deal and the latest after a small plane crashes in the bay area Thank you.